Afternoon, gang. Happy lunch hour. Yep, raining here today, so it's Aaron's day, so I'm sitting in the car at the moment. Uh, how safe is your money? There was an interesting report that came out this morning from some economists at USC that you guys might need to be aware of. Now, most of you have probably already heard the stories that FedNow is coming in July. By now, the hopes and dreams of the globalists are that there's only six banks left in the United States by summertime. I mentioned what those six were a week or so back. But that story that came out of from the economists at USC this morning was very, very frightening, I guess, to say the least. They are figuring that by this summer, we will see over 190 banks in the United States go under to the tune of leaving some $300 billion worth of retail customers, i.e. you and me, okay, left holding the bag without any money because FDIC can't insure that much. Now, maybe you've seen what's going on today with First Republic Bank. We've talked about them for the better part of the last two months. And a couple of days ago, the stock was down 50%. Yesterday, it recovered a little bit because they were talking about some bailouts or whatever. Well, they're having a big problem with the their big investors pulling money out of the bank and they don't have the money to pay the retail investor or the retail customers, you and me. Okay. Now I want to explain a little bit how this works. I've tried to do it before, but some of you guys are new. Some of you guys may not quite understand this. But what a bank does, and I'm not, I'll make this quick so it's not 10 minutes or whatever. But what a bank does, you go in and you deposit your paycheck. Say it's a thousand bucks, okay? And a hundred other people deposit their thousand dollar paycheck. The bank has a hundred thousand dollars. The bank doesn't put it all back in the vault and say, okay, when somebody comes to take out money, we're fine. What they do is they either loan it out in mortgages, car payments, credit cards, whatever would be like that. Or they put it, they buy treasury bonds. Okay. It's what a lot of banks have done over the last 10 years is put a lot of money in treasury bonds. So what has happened is they buy a thousand dollars worth of treasury bonds. It was paying a 1% coupon. Okay. So they made, you know, 1% on that thousand dollars over the course of years. They made 10 bucks, right? You guys know savings account, you were getting paid 0.1% interest if you were lucky. And the bank was profiting that 0.9%. Okay. They took your money. They made 1% on it, gave you 0.1% of it, and they kept 0.9% of the profit by using your money. Well, a bank only has to keep 10% of the deposits that it, that it has liquid, okay? So of that $1,000 that you deposit, the bank only has to keep $100, $100 back in the vault. That's it, okay? So now, if that $100,000 worth of people, all of a sudden, 10 of them decide to come in and close their account and take $10,000, they're fine. They've got it. But if 20, 20 people decide they want to come in and close their account, they don't have the money on hand. So they have to sell the bonds. Well, the problem is as interest rates have gone up, bond prices go down. Okay, and I've explained how that works before. So now the bank doesn't have the capital to pay off the people that want to get their own money out and so they're selling at a loss. You know, and you hear all these pundits all the time, well, a bank won't have a problem. They just hold everything to maturity anyway and they get all their money back. That's their normal plan. Until you get a bank run. And like I said, when more than 10% of the deposits want to be withdrawn, the bank doesn't have the cash. And now they're stuck selling stuff at a loss. And that's where you're going to see these banks fail left and right. And the FDIC does not have the money to bail them all out. So we are going to get stuck holding the bag going, sorry, Charlie, there ain't no money for you. Okay. So the question then leads in, and this is what I bitch about all the time, is how the economy, how Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen say they're going to get 
inflation under control, and they're doing it completely wrong. I mean, Janet Yellen, everybody in the Biden administration is in so far over their head. They are so underqualified for the job they have. It's unbelievable. Okay, The simple solution to control inflation is to raise interest rates, make it harder for the consumer, you know, less attractive to the consumer to go out and buy stuff, right? What we're going to do is we're going to reduce demand to bring it into what, where supply is. That's their idea. That's the easy way to do things, okay? That's typical of the Biden administration. God knows we can't take on difficult problems. We'll ignore those. We'll take the easy way out. Gee, you think Biden was a millennial or Gen Z, you know? The correct way to do this would be to increase supply to meet demand, not bring demand down. See, because here's the problem when you when you raise interest rates. It's not just you and me, the consumer, that is stuck with these higher interest rates. It's also the businesses. You walk into the local hardware store, the local grocery store, the local whatever store, do you honestly think that the store wrote a check for all the inventory they have? I mean, go into Home Depot, just one Home Depot, okay? And imagine the millions upon millions of dollars that are there in inventory, okay? In one store. Home Depot's got what? A thousand stores across the country? You know, a billion dollars worth of inventory or whatever it would be. I mean, keep going. Think think of a car lot. You know, guy's got 500 cars on the lot at $50,000 a piece. You think the owner of that car lot paid cash for all of those? No, he's got a line of credit somewhere that he uses to buy those cars. And then he pays that line of credit, pays the bills on the line of credit. Here's the problem, Okay. Hypothetical numbers again. When interest rates were down at 1%, and let's say the car dealer, the Home Depot, whoever, wants to make a 5% profit, well, he's got to pay that 1% note, okay? And he needs to make 5%, so his markup is 6% on the car, right? And that's what you and I pay, or the faucet, or the Christmas tree, or whatever you're buying. Well, now when interest rates go up to 5%, and he wants to make a 5% profit. Now the, now the price of that you and I pay is 10% higher. So we pay it because he's paying it. But the banks are restricting the amount of credit that they are giving to anybody right now. You guys have seen, you know, Carvana going bankrupt. There's a couple other car, big car dealers or whatever that said they can't uh, put in, uh, you know, get loans to get inventory or whatever. So what we're having is a reduction in supply, which is even going to make inflation even worse. You know, we are going into a point of stagflation. You guys know that. You know, we're getting higher and higher interest rates and lower and lower supply. The exact opposite of what you do to control inflation. You need to increase supply and reduce uh, demand, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You need to increase supply to keep up with demand. That's how that's how you grow as a company, as a country, whatever it would be. And that's where they are completely failing. Is it possible that 190 banks go under this summer? Oh yeah, okay. Because how many small businesses and mid-sized businesses now can't put inventory on the floor? And if they can't put inventory on the floor, that means they can't sell anything. So those businesses go out of business, all right? Now you have less less things to buy, less opportunity to have to spend your money. Oh, and then we wanna bring in Fed now, so now we can control how you spend your money. Do you see how this is all planned to completely collapse the economy, to move us to a digital currency where they can control what you do, what you're allowed to be able to spend, where you can go, you know, I'm sorry, Mr. Pinball, you've used your allotment of $20 worth of gas this month. You don't get any more, so you can't go anywhere. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Pinball. We're going to limit you to be, only go five miles from your house. We're going to shut off your digital wallet if you go further than five miles from your house. That's what's coming. Do not listen to this bullshit that they're trying to get inflation under check. 
they want inflation to keep going up because they are trying to drive supply down, doing exactly the opposite of what the talking heads in the media are telling you to do. Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell, Powell don't have a freaking clue how economics work. They must have got their degree at Boston University along sitting next to AOC because none of them have they, none of them know that there's a hundred pennies in a dollar. OK, they aren't that smart. The only question and I never hear this brought up. OK, and I would love somebody to figure this, somebody to ask about this, but you get into the issue here real quick of will we be able to buy gold and silver with our CBDC? You hear all these people say, oh, Bitcoin is the future and, you know, CBDC, CBDC will never work because of Bitcoin. They'll shut. Sorry about that. The video cut out. It's a good thing I go and check them before I post them because I didn't finish making my point. But guys, they are going to regulate Bitcoin out of existence. Bitcoin is not the answer, okay? Remember, Bitcoin's unregulated. They want everything completely regulated so they can control where you go, what you do, et cetera, et cetera. Gold and silver is going to be our only option to stick it to the man, let's put it that way, where it's not gonna be trackable, where they will not have total control over your life. Is it possible 190 banks uh, go out of business this summer? Yeah. Do you want to be the one going, where's my money? If they completely deregulate or deregulate, make cash disappear, you know, your greenback is no longer valid, what are you going to do? You may have to convert that to Bitcoin, but you better, not Bitcoin, Fedcoin, but you may, you better off, you better have something else in the kitty so you have something to pay bills with. Yeah, beans, band-aids, and bullets are important, but you can add that fourth B of bullion and make sure you've got that in the kitty too. Pinball out.